carry your digital world with you wherever you go with you. You can start using any surface, any wall around you as an interface. The camera is actually tracking all your gestures. Whatever you are doing with your hands, it's understanding that gesture. And actually, if you see, there are some color markers that in the beginning version we were using over there. You can start painting on any wall, that you stop by a wall and start painting on that wall. But we are not only tracking here one finger. We are giving you the freedom of using all the both of hands. So you actually can use both of your hands to zoom into or zoom out a map just by pinching operation over here. The camera is actually doing just getting all the images, it's doing the age recognition and also the color recognitions and like so many small algorithms are going inside. So technically it's a little bit so complex, but it gives you an output which is more intuitive to use in some sense. But I'm more excited that you can actually take it outside. Rather than getting your camera out of your pocket, you can just do the gesture of taking a photo and it takes photo for you. Right? Thank you. And later, I can find a wall, any, anywhere a wall, and start browsing these photos. Or maybe, okay, I want to modify this photo a little bit and send it as an email to a friend. So, so we are looking for an, an era where computing will actually merge with the physical world. And of course, if you don't have any surface, you can start using your palm for simply operation. I'm here, I'm dialing a phone number just using my hand. Yep. The camera is actually not only understanding your hand movements, but interestingly, it's also able to understand what objects you are holding in your hand. What we are doing here is actually, for example, in this case, the book cover is matched with so many thousands of, or maybe millions of books online and checking out which book it is. Once it has that information, it finds out more reviews about that or maybe uh, New York Times had a sound over you on that so you can actually hear on a physical book as a review of a sound. gave a famous talk at Harvard University. This was Thank Obama's uh, last visit uh, last week thank to you, MIT. MIT. And in particular, I want to thank two outstanding uh, MIT So I was seeing the live Eric. of his talk outside uh, in just a newspaper. Your newspaper will show you live of your weather information rather than having updated like a, you have to check your computer in order to do that, right? When I'm going back, uh, I can just use my boarding pass and to check, uh, oh, my flight has been how much delayed. Because at that particular time, I'm not feeling of opening my iPhone and checking out a particular icon. And I think this technology will not only change the way, yes, it will change the way we interact with people also, not only the physical world. The fun part is like I'm going to Boston Metro and playing Pong game inside the train on, on the ground, right? And I think the imagination is the only limit of what you can think of when this kind of technology merging with the real life. But many of you argue actually that all of our work is not only about physical objects. We actually do all lots of uh, accounting and paper editing and all those kind of things. What about that? And many of you are actually excited about the next generation tablet computers to come out in the market. So rather than waiting for that, I actually made my own um, and just using a piece of paper. So what here I did is uh, remove the camera, the, all the cameras, webcam, have a microphone inside that camera. I removed that microphone from that. And that, just pinch that, like I just make a clip out of that microphone and clip that to a piece of paper, any paper that you found around. So now this, the sound of the touch is exactly getting me when exactly I'm touching the paper. But the camera is actually tracking where my fingers are moving. You can, of course, watch movies. Good afternoon. My name is Russell, and I am a wilderness explorer in Tribe 54. And you can, of course, play games. Uh, here, the camera is actually understanding how you're holding the paper and playing the car racing game. Many of you already must have thought, okay, you can browse, yeah. Of course, you can browse uh, to any, any website. So you can do all sorts of computing on a piece of paper wherever you need it. So, but more interestingly, I'm interested that how we can take that in a more dynamic way. When I come back to my desk, I can just pinch that information back to my desktop so that I can use my, my full-size computer. And why only computers? We can, we can just play with papers. Like paper world is interesting uh, to play with. So here I'm taking a part of a document and putting over here the second part of a second place. And I'm actually 
modifying the information that I have over there. Yeah, and then I'm saying, okay, let's, this, is, this looks nice. Let me print it out, that thing. So I have a now printout of that thing. And now, so the, the workflow is more intuitive the way that we used to do before, maybe 20 years back, rather than now switching between these two worlds. So as a last thought, I think that integrating information to our everyday objects will not only help us to get rid of the digital divide, the gap between these two worlds, but it will also help us in some way to stay human, to, to be more connected to our physical world. And it will actually help us not end up being machines sitting in front of another machines. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Pranav, first of all, I mean, you're a genius. This is in incredible. Really. Thanks a lot. Um, what, what, are you, what are you doing with this? Is there, is there a company being planned? Or, how, or is this research forever or what? So, there are lots of companies, actually, sponsored companies of Media Lab, are interested in taking this ahead in a one or other way. The companies like mobile phone operators want to take this in a different way than, than the NGOs in India are thinking that why can we only have sixth sense? We should have a fifth sense or missing sense people who cannot speak. Maybe this technology can be used for them to speak out uh, in a different way, but maybe speaker system. I mean, what are your own plans? Are you, are, you, are you staying at MIT or are you going to do I'm, something with I'm, this? I'm trying to make this more available to people so that anyone can develop their own sixth sense device because the hardware is actually not that... Uh, that and that uh, hard to manufacture or something, hard to make your own. own. And we will, I will provide all the open source uh, software for them, maybe starting next month. Yeah. So that's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yep.